Well, a new study finds your work schedule as a young adult may harm your health decades later. Researchers used data from more than 7,300 participants in a youth survey working early standard hours and then transitioning into volatile schedules between the ages of 22 and 49 was significantly associated with the poorest health. This pattern was also linked with reporting the poorest health and depressive symptoms at age 50. Researchers say the advancement in technology and the gig economy, particularly since the COVID pandemic, means people are increasingly working non-standard schedules. And for more on the study, we're joined live by its author, Dr. Wenwei Han, who's also a professor at NYU. Doctor, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. So we know that common sense uh, tells us that any instability, work, diet, fitness, relationships, has really profound impacts on our lives. But what surprised you in this study when you looked at how patterns in young adulthood translated to health outcomes later in life? I think there's uh, two points I really like to make is the first one is it, it's about volatility in our work schedules. Like our, if our jobs require us to change our schedule from uh, daytime to evening to night hours or to regular hours, or sometimes perhaps for people who have to work at several jobs, those kind of uh, constant changes in schedules really introduce chaos in our routines, right? When and how we can socialize our family and friends or also uh, including about when and how long we can sleep. So those are chaos introduced by work schedule are really hurtful in terms of uh, uh, our health and sleep uh, 30 years from now. What I really appreciate in terms is the long-term aspect of this work is when we were young, maybe we were thinking working this out or the schedule is okay, we can handle it. Physically, emotionally speaking, we're still young. But then um, but the long-term aspect of this evidence is really speaking true. Even though we think we can handle it, 30 years down the road, we really can feel the emotional and physical toll placed in our health. And the second um, evidence uh, really I like to highlight is all of us from time to time, we may work um, not at daytime hours, we work even at night, including us, right, professional jobs. So we may also feel the health impact in this case. But what I really want to emphasize is for people who don't have resources like us, we have jobs come with resources, allow us to uh, access health care, health insurance, sick pay, vacation pay. So we can take care of ourselves. But a lot of uh, people, they don't have jobs, uh, have this luxury to uh, pay them well, to come with a health care insurance. In this case, I'm talking about United States uh, context. They don't have a vacation or paid K, uh, uh, six pay to really allow them to take those breaks. So these are the people really bur uh, sh shoulder the burden of health in this case. Yeah, your message there was just a wake-up call for me. I mean, I feel like I'm young. I can get by with four or five hours of sleep and kind of do the swing schedule with the shift work. But when it comes to people looking for jobs, then, doctor, how should they balance the pros and cons of the job when it comes to, for example, wages and benefits versus volatile work hours? Um, for us, we can we really can want to look at the balance, right? The quality of life and how does that really dictate our, how we live our life and a healthy, happy life. But for people who don't have a luxury to choose the jobs, I think the message is really for not for people who uh, for people who don't have resources. Like say, you need to look for jobs that really give you benefits, don't hurt your health. But what is the message is really about? How we as a society, right? It's a twenty four seven economy. We need people to serve during night hours, even in hours. So. So the message should be, as a society, how can we look after each other? Let's say we got your back. We need you to work at such hour schedules, but then let us take care, take care of you, right? So this really from company's perspective, perhaps if you need people work at such work as schedules, perhaps you can provide resources, right? We, we're talking about people who are very stressed working at such, uh, even in nine hours. Um, is the, the burden on their health. Maybe they need to eat much more healthy, they have to exercise. But honestly speaking, they don't have a time to really eat healthy because healthy food now is the most expensive ones. And they don't have time for exercise. So to say to them, say, you should eat healthy, you should exercise, is really not reasonable in my view in terms of people who don't have resources and luxury. So from company's perspective, perhaps you should provide resources, a break room uh, access to healthy food for people who work at such hours, 
a, a space, a time for people to can plug in the exercising time in this case. I think that's the message I, I like to send. Doctor, we don't have much, too much time left together, but I want to squeeze in one more question here because we talked about it in the pandemic, bringing on new things like the gig economy, for, exa- for example, advancements in technology. How does that play into your study? So it's really about if you can control your work schedule, that's fine uh, because you know how to arrange your family routine, your sleep hours. It's really about when the jobs uh, demands you, you have to change your schedule involuntarily. You don't know how to schedule your arrangement because maybe the ask is somebody asks you to switch your schedule. So at uh, the best notice in terms of how I know two weeks of have time, a month of a time, I know how to arrange my schedule. Light is a very important thing we should do. It is not easy. Dr. Wenwei Han, uh, the author of the study, also professor at NYU, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Have a great weekend.